Uh, I'd like to start off with a question. How would you define beauty? Is it having the perfect skin, the perfect hair, or the perfect body? The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines beauty as the quality or aggregate of qualities in a person or thing that gives us pleasure to the senses or pleasurably exalts the mind or spirit. From country to country, the perception of beauty is vastly different and, con and continuously changes as the idea evolves. Two summers ago, I had the opportunity to get a glimpse into what beauty means to the Burmese men and women living in the Mela refugee camp. As I explored the camp and spoke to the refugees, I couldn't help but notice the makeup they wore on a day-to-day -day basis, known as Tayanaka, a cosmetic paste used on the face or arms. I later learned that this paste has been used by the Burmese men and women for centuries. This tradition, passed down by the men and women of Burma, sparked my interest in what the true meaning of beauty is. Is it the makeup we wear? Is it the clothes we dress ourselves in? Or is it something bigger, something deeper within us? In New Zealand, the Maori people have been decorating their faces with tattoos called moko for centuries. Similar to the Burmese men and women, the Maori women use these tattoos to express their beauty. In Mauritania, located in Western Africa, the phrase bigger is better applies when it comes to beauty standards amongst women. From a young age, as young as seven, girls are forced to eat large quantities of couscous and goat's milk to gain weight rapidly, consuming up to 16,000 calories a day. That's about 4.4 pounds of food a day. In contrast to the United States, stretch marks and rolling layers of fat are sought after and praised in Mauritania. Social, construct, social constructs of beauty in Mauritania, the United States, and worldwide are guaranteed to have negative consequences on young people and society as a whole. The desire for large figures in Mauritania has resulted in obesity and low self-image amongst women. Leaving girls searching for their value in the opinion of others, worried that being thin will result in them being unwanted by men and tormented by their friends and family. Like any other country in the United, uh, sorry. <laughs> Like any other country, the United States has undergone a beauty revolution. Beginning with Rubenesque figures in the 1800s, the new beauty standard today revolves around an obsession with models, movies, and unattainable standards of perfection. Social constructs around the world have resulted in negative effects on boys and girls, resulting in approximately 8 million people affected by eating disorders in the United States alone. I am one of those 8 million. It first began with a photo, specifically my eighth grade choir class photo. I was 13 at the time, and the first thing I thought when I saw it was, I'm fat. What began as wanting to lose a couple pounds soon turned into something very self-destructive and toxic. I became obsessed with numbers, counting calories and watching the number on the scale drop. I began to equate my value with being thin. I thought that the thinner I was, the more beautiful I'd become. Well, I was wrong. Three years and 30 pounds later, with constant support, I've learned that Sorry, um, I've learned that my body is beautiful regardless of its imperfections. I've learned that beauty is so much more than the gap between your thighs or the size of your jeans. Surrounded by magazines, movies, and social media that emphasize the imperfections and blemishes of young teens and adults makes it seem nearly impossible to move past the surface layer. Well, I'd say it's time to move past the surface layer and have the courage to break through the social constructs of beauty. So, what's your own beauty mark?
What I mean by this is what part of yourself doesn't fit society's construct of beauty? What part of yourself bothers you the most? Is it the size of your thighs? Is it your cellulite? Is it the fat on your hips? We must look past the way our society defines beauty. We must, we must love and embrace our own beauty marks because they are the building blocks of the beautiful, loving, and intelligent you. We must remember that somewhere in this world, there's a country, culture, or tribe that would consider your unbeauty mark the ideal beauty. As a society and as individuals, we must learn to talk about beauty in an empowering and inspiring way, rather than picking and probing at imperfections. Now is the time to stand up for your own beauty marks. Now is the time to love the real you. Thank you.